What is going on guys, MJ2005 Gundam here, and today I'm going to be re-reviewing the high-grade Gundam Kimaris Vidar from Gundam Iron Blooded Orphans. Bearing the same appearance as the Kimaris used by Sir Gargan Baudouin, it has resurfaced when it shed its slightly armed disguise to fulfill Gaelio's revenge quest against Magillus Farid. The high-grade Kimaris Vidar is made up of 5 runners and a somewhat extensive sticker sheet, and despite its dramatically different looks compared to the previous variants, the build revolves around the all-too-familiar high-grade Gundam frame, with no special bells and whistles except for how it uses the Type 2 variants like the previous Kimaris variants. Apart from the occasional small parts during the assembly and the dark brown being prone to nub marks, the build is frankly easy, and a decent chunk of time would be devoted to applying the stickers properly. Otherwise, it's basically the same build as other standard high-grade Gundam frames. Once assembled and on the surface, the high-grade Kimaris Vidar represents the animation model well. It's got the fearsome silhouettes, the dark brown legs that represents the black horse of the actual demon, the gear cog helmet I still question to this day, and plenty of surface details to bring out as per usual of Ipe Gyobu designs. Though the colors and parts separation are where things take a downhill turn as while the part separation for the yellow on the head and knees are nice, huge blotches of stickers are used for the purple and grey on the forearms and the yellow on the waist skirts, besides the forehead, eyes, and the bottle and family emblems on the shields. Speaking of which, while there are no missing paint jobs on the surface besides the black in the recesses, the internals of the shield need to be painted in a dark brown for the legs, while the bullet in the middle should be in the frame colour. Furthermore, the colours are completely wrong. The white body needs a tinge of purple, while the purple on the body needs to actually be purple instead of blue, and the yellow should have been paler. Never mind that the shields are supposed to be in a different purple to the rest of the body. With those colors, it looks completely anemic and unintimidating, but thankfully, the paint guide points you in the right direction, so it's not that big of a deal if you want to put effort in. You might want to seal up the seam lines on the shoulders, forearms, and knees while you're at it as well. Like most IBO kits of the season, the visual foundations are there, and it's up to the builder to bring out its visual potential. I will not recommend that people leave it in a straight built state. Articulation wise, the head is on the double ball joints with no real restrictions. The shoulders are on ball joints, while the shoulder armor can raise up for the arm and socket to call the teacher. There is a swivel at the bicep, single jointed elbows, and ball jointed wrists. There's a bar in the torso and rotation in the waist. Front and side skirts can move for the pelvic swivels, as well as the front and sideward kicks. There's a thigh swivel, double jointed knees, a ball jointed ankle with a slightly limited dedicated tilt, and moving toes. Finally, the backpack arms have two rotations and a bend at the base, a double joint in the middle, and a bend and ball joint at the shield which can also peg into the arms for solid, compact storage. Articulation of the Kimaris Vidar is generally good, while my copy in particular is quite solid to move. Though, besides it being clunky due to the bulk, the shield arms have a tendency to dislodge from movement, so do watch for that. For accessories, besides the standard pair of holding hands, there is an angled right hand for use with the Drill Lance, its primary weapon. It can simply be sandwiched into the hand, but unlike previous Kimaris lances, this does not feature a peg on the handle for fixation, and its weight is absolutely a problem on the shoulders. However, a pseudo fixation mechanism is included by extending one of the shields and connecting it into the lance using the special cup bullets for its dying slave mechanic, one that is only used in the manga and games. If the lance is lost, a sword can be used from direct insertion as a backup weapon which can be stored on the side skirts until the time calls for it. Finally, if all else fails, the drill knee capable of drilling through nanolaminate armor can be deployed with a separate piece to brutally destroy any opponent that draws near. I was fairly lukewarm about the high-grade Gundam Kimaris Vidar when it was initially revealed, and while I've come to appreciate more from the world building done over the years, the kit remains just as meh as when it was first released. The build is fairly easy, if not uninteresting to IBO veterans, and most of the feelings would be brought out from applying the stickers, which translates into the fairly subpar visuals on top of the anemic colors, despite the imposing bulk and well-done sculpt. And while this kit is thankfully fully featured, unlike some other kits, the the weakness of polycasts from handling heavy weapons manifests despite the otherwise solid structure. There's always a counterpoint to every merit it has, and I guess it ultimately comes down to the purchase motivation. 
personally, I repurchased it as a potential complementary piece just in case the other 7 stars designs get made into high grade kits. Otherwise, it's barely recommendable to those interested with its sculpt and full feature set being the saving graces. Apart from that, it's up to you. And that's all for me. Thank you for watching, drop a like and comment if you did enjoy the video, subscribe for more content like this, and feel free to follow me on social media with the links down below. That said, take it easy, stay safe, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out guys, Bye bye